Okay, we're going to move a little more quickly through the remaining milling exercises. Um, both of the next two exercises are, are good examples of freeform geometry. Uh, starting with sample four, which looks like this, we see three things that need to be drawn. Uh, we need an island in the middle of this pocket, we need the pocket, and then we need the outer shape of the part. This rectangular shape just represents our stock. It's not actually part of the part. Uh, this is the outside profile of the part here. So if we look at the island, uh, we have two circles that are defined and two lines that are uh, defined only by the circles. So we have two circles which are our foundation geometry and two lines which are dependent geometry. Pretty much the same situation we had on the slot shape with sample three. Uh, so we're going to uh, start by drawing this and then we'll take a look at the, the pocket geometry. Uh, so let me jump back over to Gibbs. Uh, well, actually, let's look at our part first. Uh, we have aluminum uh, 3.7 each way in the x-axis from our origin, which is the center of this, uh, this end of the, the island. And then we have 2.7 each way in the y. So going back to Gibbs... We have our sample four part, and we're going to say 3.7 minus 3.7 both ways in the X, and 2.7 and minus 2.7 in the Y, zero and minus one in the Z. So we're going to save this, we're going to X out, and we're going to focus solely on the island. Now, the island has a half inch radius that's around the origin, and then it has a quarter inch radius that is an inch away at a 15 degree elevation. Uh, there's really two basic ways that we could approach this uh, with one slight variation. Uh, and I'll show you both, uh, or actually all three. Uh, it won't take but just a minute. So the way that most people would do this would be like this. Uh, they would go to geometry, open uh, circle, radius and center point. They would create a circle at the origin with a half inch radius, shift enter, and then a quarter inch radius, one inch over from that. And then they would draw their lines, tangent to these two circles, select the solutions that they want. The big circle solves backwards, so we're gonna right click and reverse arc, and then we're gonna select this entire shape, go to modify, 2D rotate, we're going to rotate around the origin counterclockwise 15 degrees. And that is ready to go. Uh, I would have a tendency to do it slightly differently than that, so I'm going to delete this. Uh, I'm going to draw a point at the origin and then a point, a polar point measured from that a distance of 1 at 15 degrees. And then that's my center points for the two circles. So I could draw a circle radius and center point around that point with a half inch radius and around this point with a quarter inch radius. The reason that I would have a tendency to do it this way is just my shop background. Uh, the programming office was in the middle of the shop. I was also the shop manager uh, at times or the lead man uh, before that. And so I was frequently interrupted and I could see having created this rotated 15 degrees out of position, not having rotated it into position yet, getting interrupted and uh, forgetting to, to finish rotating it. So I have a tendency to try to create things in correct position if it's about a similar amount of work. So, so the second way is probably the way that I would do it. Uh, now I had a customer point out to me that you could kind of handle both situations at once. If you just drew a circle started out like we did with the first one, half inch radius and then one inch over, create the quarter inch radius. But before drawing the lines, take this circle and do your rotation. So the slot, the uh, island is not finished, the shape of it's not finished, so I'm less likely to miss finishing it and it's already rotated into position. So really, any of these three methods is perfectly fine. They all take about the same amount of time. Uh, the first way is probably slightly quicker, um, but uh, there you go. So let's go back to our drawing, 
And let's start looking at the rest of this. Now, really the only thing we have to draw is the pocket because the outer shape is just a constant wall offset from the pocket. All of these dimensions are going to the pocket. Um, and then we're just offsetting that shape for the outside of the part. So let's focus on the pocket now. We have four hole locations. Each of these holes has a half inch radius circle around it. So clearly defined and easy to draw. Uh, in addition, a lot of this other geometry relies on those four half inch radiuses and this two inch radius here around the origin. There's a piece of it there and a piece of it over here. Uh, now, a couple of things to point out. Uh, the half inch radius is in five places. Four of those places are around the holes and the fifth place is right here in this corner. And then also point out that this is a four inch diameter, so it's a two inch radius. This is a four inch radius, so it's an eight inch diameter. This circle is twice as big as that circle. Um, so I think somebody's trying to trip people up here, but uh, uh, this, this circle here is half the size of that one. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out my four hole locations. So we have three and two to here, then minus two to here, minus three in the X to here, and then this one's at zero in the Y. So be pretty quick to lay out. Go to point, explicit point. X3, Y2, Shift, Enter. There's our first point, Tab, minus 2, Enter, minus 3, Enter, Tab, 0, Enter. There's our four hole locations. While I'm there, I'm going to also put one at the origin. All right, so now let's draw our foundation geometry. So I'm going to draw circles, radius, and center point. My center points are going to be all four of these locations. And I just held down the shift key and drew two boxes, one around these two, one around those two. I'm going to type in a radius of a half inch, shift enter. And then I'm also going to draw a circle around this point with a two inch radius. That's our foundation geometry. Now to finish this thing up, I'm going to draw a circle, tangent to this and this, with a four inch radius. I'm going to select the one that I want. And I've got my right hand on the mouse, my left hand on the enter key. So I just select the one that I want and hit enter. I'm going to go to line, tangent to this and this. Hit enter. Select the one that I want and hit enter. I also need a line that passes through these two points. It's not tangent to the circles. It goes through the middle of them. And then I'm going to draw a circle tangent to this and this with a half inch radius. Select the one that I want. Now down here, it's just a square corner, so I'm going to just select both of these and connect them. Now, the line is not tangent to the circle, so there's two points of intersection. It intersects up here and down here. The software is saying, which one do you want? Do you want to connect it up here, or do you want to connect it down here? I want to connect it up here, so I'm going to click on that and hit Enter. All right, before I can go any further, I need this circle back, so I'm going to highlight it and hit Control D to duplicate it and click off in space. We have a one inch radius in here, so I'm gonna draw a circle, tangent to that circle and that circle with a one inch radius. Select the one that I want. All right, the circle solved backwards. I'm gonna go ahead while I'm sitting here, right click on it and reverse arc. Notice I didn't even select it. Then I'm gonna draw a line that's tangent to this circle and this circle. Select the one that I want and hit enter. All right, now we get to this kind of odd line right here. It's tangent to this circle, but it's parallel to a construction line or a dotted line that passes through the center of this hole, and it's 150 thousandths off of that line. A lot of people like to create the construction geometry, which is unnecessary to me, but I'll show you how to do that. So this is the way that, that you know, some people prefer to do this. They want to draw the construction line. So that's going to look like this. I'm going to draw a circle, radius and center point around this point with a radius that's 150 thousandths smaller than this one. So that's going to be a 350 thousandths radius. And then draw a line that's tangent to that circle, passes through that point. Select the one that we want. And that's our construction line. Then I can draw a parallel line it's parallel to that, offset by 150 thousandths, select the one that I want, and hit enter. Now I can get rid of all this stuff, 
because it was just construction geometry and just reconnect my line here and here. Again, there's going to be two solutions here because it's not tangent. I want to connect it down here. All right. So that's the way that a lot of people would do it. Let me back up to here. I don't look at this as a construction line. I look at this more as a reference line. Uh, when I look at this, what I'm seeing is that I need to draw a line that's tangent to this circle and passes exactly 150 thousandths away from the center of this circle or from this whole location. So I approach this differently. Uh, I draw a circle radius and center point around this point with 150 thousandths radius and then just draw a line that's tangent to this circle and that circle. Select the one that I want and hit enter. And then delete my construction geometry. If there's a connector attached to it, I'm going to get it as well. And then just reconnect this line to that circle. Either way gets you there. Uh, I think the second way is a little quicker, uh, a little less geometry that you have to create. But you know whatever whatever suits the way that you see the drawing, um, it, you can get there. All right. So the last thing that we need to do, as far as creating geometric shapes, is to create the outside of the part. Now again, it's just a hundred and fifty thousandths wall constant offset, uh, or constant wall offset from the pocket. So very simple, just select any or all of this, doesn't matter, any portion of it. Gibbs recognizes this as a complete shape. Go to my shapes button and offset. We're going to offset it 150 thousandths. An accuracy of a thousandths is fine because these are all going to be lines and arcs anyway. Uh, square corners in this case does not matter because we're only taking the outside solution. Um, so note that square corners is turned off. If When I hit do it, Gibbs offsets it both directions. Now I'm going to delete the inside one because we didn't need it. But notice that around sharp corners, it's radiusing around that. It's rounding that corner. If I were to turn square corners on, then I get a square corner there rather than a radius corner. Again, in this case, it does not matter because it doesn't change the outside shape. And the inside shape, we're just going to double click and delete anyway. All right, then if I wanted to kind of finish this up a little bit, make it look a little nicer, I'm going to go to point and center point and radius. I'm going to select my whole locations and give that a radius of an eighth of an inch. And now I need to get rid of a bunch of points. Uh, my, the points at the centers of the circles are the center of the holes as well as the construction points that were created. Uh, just a little hint, very quick and easy to go to edit select special and select all points but notice that that gets all of the connectors and terminators as well so if i delete all of those my whole part comes unglued so let me undo that and go back to edit with all the points selected and i can deselect connectors and or terminators depending on what's in my file in this case all i need to deselect is connectors there are no terminators and anything that's left selected can be deleted so there's our part cleaned up and ready to start putting toolpath on it. So go ahead and take a shot at this. Uh, I, I want you to deal with the shapes one at a time. I recommend starting with the, the island in the middle of the pocket. Get it finished and then leave it alone and then deal with the pocket. Uh, the pocket, you're going to create five circles, the four half inch radius circles that are around each of your hole locations and then this two inch radius here there's going to be a piece of it up here when you're finished as well as a piece of it down here so make sure you finish this one before you get down here or you can finish this one before you get up here uh, so uh, just take it a piece at a time get your foundation geometry down and then just focus on how to create this circle and then how to create this line and then how to create this line and note that this line is not tangent to the circles it passes through the center of the circles um, and work your way on around and if you have any questions when you get over to this part just ask